Hello everyone and welcome to this Privacy Rules Privacy Espresso special episode special because today you can see with me not one speaker but two guest speaker and I'm uh, very pleased to have them both together with us uh, today. The reason being is that we are going to discuss about a very recent and relevant case from uh, Norway that is what we call the meta case and we are going to do that with two experts providing us two different perspectives. Uh, from the one side, our uh, guest speaker, I would say special guest speaker, that is uh, uh, Luca Tosoni, uh, special director at the International Affairs Department of the Norwegian Data Protection Authority, the Data Tiltsinet. Uh, on the other side, that is the privacy rule side, I'm pleased to introduce you uh, to uh, Marte Wellerop Tronstedt. Uh, Marte is privacy and data protection expert from the Norwegian law firm Breakfast Advocate Firma. So, first of all, thanks a lot to you both for uh, being here. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. And uh, I would like to immediately start uh, with an overview on what we are going to, to speak about. And I think, Luca, I will leave the floor to you to provide us with some context as you've been dealing with the case uh, directly. So can you give us a bit more details on what happened and what we are going to talk about? Sure. I will try to give you a bit of context so that hopefully you are able to follow this uh, interesting but very complex case as it unfolds. Uh, however, given that this is an ongoing case, uh, I will uh, only focus on the key uh, procedural and substantive issues that uh, the case raises, and I will try to limit myself to information that are already in uh, the public domain. Most of what I will say today is also described in writing on the website of the Norwegian Data Protection Authority. So for those of you who are eager readers of our website, some of the um, elements that will be outlined today will not be entirely new. But perhaps let's rewind the tape and uh, let me bring you back to the origins of, of this case. The origins of the case date back to May 2018, which, uh, as you may recall, is the date uh, when the GDPR started to apply uh, in Europe, when a digital rights organization known as uh, NOIB uh, filed complaints against Meta, uh, who at that time was still called Facebook, essentially challenging the lawfulness of uh, behavioral advertising uh, practices carried out on its platform, and in particular, the lack of a valid legal basis uh, for behavioral advertising, which at that time was uh, 6.1b meaning uh, the performance of uh, a contract. Those complaints were the subject of long and thorough investigation led by uh, the Irish Data Protection Authority, the DPC, in cooperation with other supervisory authorities, including uh, the Norwegian one. And the outcome of that investigation was that uh, European authorities concluded that Meta had failed to rely on a valid uh, legal basis to carry out uh, behavioral advertising. And as a result, uh, in December 2022, the Irish DPA ordered Facebook to bring its processing into compliance with Article uh, 6 of the GDPR by the 5th of April 2023. As a consequence, Meta uh, decided to switch legal basis from Article 6.1b to Article 6.1f. Uh, meaning uh, legitimate interest. Uh, however, that change uh, was, in our view, uh, inadequate to ensure compliance with uh, Article 6. Uh, and our view was uh, later validated by a ruling of uh, the Court of Justice of the European uh, Union, uh, which was handed down in July 2023, where the court basically concluded that Article 6.1f um, was not a valid legal basis for personalized advertising on uh, Facebook. Therefore, in July 2023, we decided that Meta had been given enough time to bring its processing into compliance and that the ongoing uh, unlawful processing of personal data had to stop. We therefore decided to uh, impose a temporary ban on behavioral advertising based on Article 61B and F in Norway for a period of three months until the 3rd of November 2023. And we did so after having tried to convince, uh, although unsuccessfully, the Irish uh, authority to adopt similar measures. As you know, as a general rule, uh, it is for the authority of the European headquarters of a company to enforce the GDPR against that company. 
And in that, in this case, given that Meta's headquarters are in Ireland, that role is assigned to uh, the Irish DPC. However, the GDPR also allows for other supervisory authorities like the Norwegian Supervisory Authority to step in in exceptional uh, circumstances and adopt mm -hmm. provisional measures. And it is that mm -hmm. exceptional power that the Norwegian DPA uh, has made use uh, of in, in this case. Meta has challenged our provisional measures in court and tried to get a preliminary injunction against the, our order. However, that action was unsuccessful as the competent Norwegian court sided with the Norwegian DPA and concluded that the conditions for adopting provisional measures were uh, met in, in this case. Notwithstanding, Meta has uh, yet to comply with our order and to date it has only pledged to switch to consent as a lawful basis for behavioral advertising in the future. But it is yet unclear when such a switch uh, will actually take place and also whether Meta will be able to provide a consent mechanism that is able to meet all of the applicable legal requirements under, under the GDPR. So um, as basically this unlawful processing is still ongoing and Meta hasn't complied with our order, we decided to request an urgent binding decision from the board. Uh, we did that last week. So we're just in the initial phase of, of that procedure. And it should be flagged that that's a very special procedure that hasn't been uh, used very much in the past. In fact, there's only one example uh, where this procedure has been used previously. So in, in a way, we are venturing into uncharted waters. It's yet unclear how the, the procedure will, uh, will be completed. But what we know so far is that the EDPB secretariat is now checking whether they have received all of the documents that are necessary to uh, complete the procedure. And once this completeness mm -hmm. check will be uh, completed the official time frame for the procedure will uh, will uh, will be triggered and then the board will have a couple of weeks to decide on our request so mm -hmm. at, at this stage we have no control over the time frame of the procedure but what i would like to flag is that two weeks is a quite short amount of time if one considers that the the board normally takes a couple of months to deal with more regular dispute resolution procedures. Mm. So we'll see how the court will deal with that. Perfect, Luca. Mm. Thanks a lot for this quick introduction, I would say, because there was much more I know that, that you could say or could have said. And Marte, you know, we would like to hear more also from your side, your perspective, and maybe you also have some question that you would like to, to make to Luca. So I just leave the floor to you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, I thank you, Luca, for a very, very good summary of the case. This is a complicated case. It's been long going. Very, very interesting to follow as a privacy lawyer myself. I just want to ask you a little bit about these exceptional circumstances that the Court of Oslo have concluded that in this case, there are exceptional circumstances. You may request to the EDPB to adopt a binding urgent decision. This has only, like you said, it has only happened once before in the Hamburg case. Do you want to elaborate a little bit about how you, as a supervisory authority, concluded that we are under exceptional circumstances, we need to propose this temporary ban, and now maybe if we get a binding urgent decision from the EDPB, the ban might even be not just temporary, but permanent. Sure. I mean, that's probably the, the heart of, of this case, at least yes. from a procedural standpoint, because I think there is quite some consensus, let's say, after the, the ruling of the Court of Justice in the Bundesland uh, Kapitel case, that, you know, the Article 61F is, is not really on a proper legal basis, but the procedural aspect of the case, as, as I said earlier, it's it's something new uh, where there is limited yes. practice and, and, and uh, case law. So the Oslo District Court has partially uh, dealt with the conditions for imposing uh, temporary measures under Article 66 of the GDPR, although the court only dealt with uh, 66 paragraph 1 which is yes. the provision that allows national authorities like the Norwegian Data Protection Authority to adopt temporary measures. The court has not really 
uh, gone into an assessment of whether it is necessary to request an urgent binding decision from the board. This is something that you know will need to be assessed now. Uh, in our view, uh, when we submitted uh, the request to the board, the conditions are met for various reasons. But in a nutshell, some of the reasons are linked to to the fact that an Article 60 procedure, so a one-stop shop procedure, has already been complete. In this case, uh, the Irish DPC has already ordered Meta to bring its processing into compliance with Article 6 back in December uh, 2022. And now, basically, the only way for us to make sure that Meta complies with those decisions is to invoke the standard Article 60 process to make sure that Meta complies with uh, the Irish decisions. Yeah, and it should not come as a surprise that you have requested a binding urgent decision as it was written in the letter to Meta from Dr. Tessina on 14th of July. I recently reread it and I'm like, oh, it says right here that <laughs> you're going to request a binding urgent decision. It should not come as a surprise to anyone. For it a while. certainly was in the, in the cards, uh, let's mm -hmm. say, uh, but then the ultimate decision was, was made uh, more recently, of course, also in light of, uh, you know, the judgment from the Oslo District Court, and also after having considered submissions that Meta presented uh, to us. So it was a, a, a thorough uh, assessment that has been made before triggering this procedure. But now we're into it and we just await to see how the board will react and what will be the response to our request. Yeah, I'm very excited to see. I'm, I really hope that they're able to do it within the two week time gap they have to so <laughs> they have to yeah <laughs> let's see how they will deal with it continuing a little bit further i would love to discuss what companies should do um in a similar situation that meta is in now like you have the time gap between a decision from a supervisor authority saying stating you do not have a legal ground for these this processing of personal data and to the deadline like when you have to implement necessary measures or you have to have a legal grant for processing. Like, what should companies do? It will be interesting if the EDPB is clear that all processing must stop until you have a legal ground. But what if the pro the processing is actually possible, impossible, or very difficult to stop in practice? Have you, as a supervisory authority, discussed these this matter? Yeah, I think I think it's 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 a relevant and and, and important point you're raising. Um, in this specific case, I think what's important to flag is that we gave Meta uh, several weeks to comply with our order, and and Meta will will have you know even more time should the EDPB uh, adopt final measure in this case. Um, so it was not um, a surprise. It, was, it, was not a surprise. it didn't have like immediate <laughs> effect, but uh, we gave some time to Meta to to comply with it. And second of all, we believe that uh, at the end of the day, it's not for us to grant grace periods that are not provided by law. So if a company is not able to adapt its business model to, to the law, then it is unfortunately to the for the company to draw the necessary consequences for this. Also in light of, as you know, uh, one of the key principles of the GDPR, which is the accountability principle. So before yes. companies engage in in certain processing activities they need to make sure that they are able to show compliance uh, with the gdpr and it's not something that should be left for a later assessment but it can maybe seem as though the irish supervisory authority have granted some sort of grace period to meta in this case one could could say that uh, in a way so i think it remains to be seen also how um, other authorities within the board will will tackle this this issue i think this procedure before the board is also helpful to ensure a more harmonized and and consistent approach when you have 30 or so uh, authorities in charge of enforcing the gdpr it's inevitable to have some uh, disagreements, but these kind of procedures before the board are actually intended to ensure 
uh, more harmonization. So we hope that uh, also this pro procedure will help with that. Yeah, that's very interesting. Thanks a lot, Luca. Thanks, Marta, for your insightful questions and, and points. It was really good to see the exchange between the two of you, and I really look forward to have more of those. So looking forward to receive new inputs and news from both your sides. Thanks a lot, Marta. Thanks, Luca. Till next Thank time. You. Thank you. Cheers.